So let's get in here and open it. I'm very... There is a guitar in here. I have never seen a guitar shipped in a box this large. So this is shipped at an angle. And I just wanted to... I need to unbox this, but uh, here we go. Okay, and now it feels maybe like a Les Paul. <laughs> So here it is in this big, ginormous box. I've never had a guitar come in a box like this. This is a first for me. Um, so let's get this over to the bench and see exactly what we got here. Okay, here's a... I'm going to get a little closer look at this thing. i got to tell you, um, if you see any green on here, it's because i got laser crap in the background. I apologize. Um, this guitar is kind of a conundrum. And I've actually had to reshoot this because um, it just it this is kind of kind of blowing my mind a little bit, and this guitar really kind of just grew on me like a lot. Um, why do you why do I say that? Well, as you can see in the camera, it looks great, like looks like a fantastic relic, right? Now the weight is not on par with a regular Les Paul. As a matter of fact, let's weigh this real quick. So you can tell the difference. So, your Les Paul comes in at over eight pounds. I got one back here. It's, it's about eight and a half pounds. Now this one, we're gonna weigh it real quick. Let me zero this out. We'll hang it, and I'll show you exactly what it is. Bear with me, folks. And this is coming in at six point eight eight pounds, which is. I mean, I like the weight. It's light, so it's light for a Les Paul style guitar. That might turn a lot of people off right there. But let me tell you, there's more that might turn you off about this guitar. But it depends on what you're looking for, I guess. Now, I was looking for a cool guitar that's on the wall that, um, well, looks cool, but I mostly wanted a player. But when we unbox a guitar, we expect certain things. Now, I'm going to tell you, let's 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 talk about the bad first okay the finish on this even though it's a relic and i understand that it's not relic properly i guess that you'd say like they did some kind of clear over where the paint should be missing so we need to we're gonna have to get in there of course and take care of that and actually make that so the paint and the clear is missing um not too difficult, but I definitely want to do that. Um, they didn't take care to actually scrape the binding properly on top, so I'm going to have to do that. Now, it does look like an aged, faded flame top, and I think with age, it's going to even come into that more. The pickups have this copper look underneath them, and which is a really cool look that they have. I, I really like the looks of the pickups. Okay, and I'm going to give you guys a spoiler. I have played this already. Um, and we'll get to that in a second. The hardware on here, which you would expect to be a little aged or whatnot, um, is not. It's it's bright and it's shiny. Um, the bridge doesn't appear to be a fantastic bridge, but it really works well. It's got really good strings on it, but let's get back to the bad. Um, I was expect it looks so good on camera. This looks really good on camera, but once again, they have cleared over. You can feel where it was actually chipped back, but they cleared over it afterwards. Instead of doing their, their distressing, they must have taped it off and then, of course, put a sheen over it. Now, as you can see, it has a very... What I do like about this is that there's a piece here. You can see in a piece here. So it's a two-piece body in the back. And we have a grain that runs this way, and then we have a grain that actually flows really weird directions, which gives it a really cool effect. Um, I'm really liking that. They did distress it around the edges. And the neck here, same thing. They kind of gave it a distressed look around the neck. But um, the tuners are just your standard ho-hum tuners. They seem to be holding, but... I think they could be better. The, the, they've made this so that's got some scratches and indentations on the back of the headstock like it should for a relic. 
The headstock itself, I think, looks remarkably good, especially for a relic. It has scratches. It's, it's not gloss. It's kind of like a matte black, but it looks like it's aged, which is cool. So um, we can change out this hardware for more aged hardware. Now, the fretboard itself, this rosewood look fretboard, it looks actually looks more real, more real rosewood than a lot of actual real rosewood. So I'm not sure what they're using. The frets are nice and pronounced and big <coughs> on the like a medium jumbo, but on the verge of being a jumbo. The frets feel amazing all the way up till I think they missed one fret. Where is it? Right here. They missed one fret right here. That is it. So that's that's going to be a quick fix um, right here. Um, it's a, got a nice aged look. And this is the crazy part, guys. Look at this. This is an actual bone nut they put on this one. I was expecting this to be plastic. It is a bone nut. And they even made the nut... You know, not perfect, but it's perfect on each side. It's cut perfectly, but it looks a little aged, which is cool. So I'm digging that. The inlays, nobody ever talks about the inlays. The inlays are very, very nicely done, like a perloid, um, that look fantastic. Not a lot of fill around them, nothing like that, and they're all perfectly straight. So that's, we're getting on the good points. Um, the wiring inside seems to be incredibly decent. It does have a boxed switch inside of it. Um, which is cool. We can turn that over in a second and check that out. Um, but what's really remarkable is when I put my... And you might see this in another spot in the video too because I, I, I went back and did this video because I was kind of kind of beside myself when I got done. It's got the perfect amount of relief in this neck and the action is set up very low. Super nice. I mean, perfect for a Les Paul. Let's put it that way. It is set up at 1.25, a little under 1.25 all the way at the 12th fret perfectly set up there's zero fret buzz there's no high frets the frets are extremely smooth um they're not dirty i've played it they're not i've went back and redoing this part of the video for you guys because honestly i wasn't happy with the guitar when i first saw it i was like well the weight was what threw me off mostly um a couple things that stand out was you know the binding needs to be re-scraped up top to make it more authentic looking and if you're looking at this as, as a purist of course you're not going to want it anyhow but it's a good looking guitar even though on the light side but what i can tell you is it sounds freaking fantastic and it plays top notch that's the conundrum with this guitar it is an amazing playing guitar and um so how i'm going to do this so you're going to see this come back is i i like to test guitars even if it's a horrible um recording or whatnot. I want to see the enjoyment that it gives you. A lot of people who complain, oh, you weren't in uh, the right key or you weren't this. Well, a lot of times I throw on a backing track and I just go for it and noodle because I think that's the fun of it. I can sit and rehearse and play something over and over to make any guitar sound good, but how does it make me feel when I first plug it in and just go to it? Um, guessing, goddamn, hit it and forget it. And how does it make you feel then? Wrong notes and all. And that's what we do. We keep it real here at Fulton Street Beats. Um, nothing's over practice. Nothing's usually ever practiced at all. We just do it and um, have fun and experiment and see the guitar that you like the most is the one that you're not afraid to screw up on. And um, who cares? That's just it. So what would I do to this guitar? I would change the hardware. I would raise this side of the saddle down here, or the, uh, the tailpiece down here, because it's almost touching the bridge here. It's a little too close for comfort. And I just raise that a touch. It's going to take a second. Um, the other one's fine. I mean, I mean a touch. Um, it's intonated properly, super proper. This is probably the best set up guitar that I have received as far as setup in a long, 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 long time. And the last one that I had that was set up this outstanding was a Harley Benton Les Paul that really had the uh, same kind of thing. It had some QC issues, but it was the best playing guitar I think I've ever had in here. And this may rival that guitar because it's that cool. Now, pickups, they're extremely hot and they are slightly microphonic, but not to the point. And so, microphonics in Les Pauls I like because it makes them scream. Um, where yes, you can talk into them. You'll hear yourself like a microphone. That's what microphonics are. But here's the thing. All pickups are microphonic because they are in inherently microphones. Uh, they are in a magnetic field. They're picking up vibration. So when you vibrate the strings with your voice, 
What that means is the pickup in in the in the springs vibrate translate into coming through the the uh, amp that translates into a sensitive pickup. And sometimes a sensitive pickup is what you want to get the job done as long as you're not getting microphonic feedback, which is a loud, you know, the loud hum that you get when you're in front of an amp. I'm not getting anything like that, but I am getting microphonics. Um, so keep that in mind. But they're a very hot pickup. They sound amazing. I, I love these pickups. I wouldn't change them. As a matter of fact, I think that's what gives this guitar its character um but look what do you think guys i mean it's 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 a it's a it's got to be up parts in the spots that it should be beat up but i think it could be done a little more but other than maybe some relic hardware or maybe even just flash relicking this hardware um i think it'd be good to go i probably will change the tuners to some grover tuners some relic grover tuners um or maybe even some Clusen style tuners. I think that would be cool. How many of you look at this guitar and think that this kind of really resembles a Jimmy Page relic? Because that's what it reminds me of. Now, looking at this guitar, if you're looking down at the flame from the top, you don't see a lot of flame. However, when you're playing the guitar and you look down and you look down at the guitar, you see a lot of flame. It's got a very weird dimensional thing going on where you look at it from the front. It's not a lot. You look at it from the edge and it really comes into its own. At first, I thought that this wasn't an actual flame. I actually thought it was a photo finish. I was wrong. It is an actual flame top on this. Um, I'm sure they're using a base wood for this guitar, but the top is definitely a very thin uh, veneer. I just thought that because of the way they relicked it and then they cleared over the spots that they well went through. <laughs> so that's what the illusion was. So once we take care of these spots and actually make them actually worn through, it's going to have a whole different effect. What would I do to this guitar? Do I recommend the guitar? If you want a player, I 100% recommend the guitar. If you want a cool guitar that's hanging in the background, I 100% rec recommend this guitar. But it's it's a player. It's a fantastic player. Is it worth upgrading? I wouldn't upgrade the pickups. I wouldn't even upgrade the wiring. I think that all works good. I, even the strings on this thing, although when you do your upgrades, you would change your strings. I think the strings are fantastic. These are definitely a 10 to 46. Um, so keep that in mind. Not a 9 to 42. 10 to 46, which I do like on a Les Paul. Like I said, bone nut. Um, super cool guitar. What would I upgrade? Um, probably these knobs. I will put some authentic nice with knobs on it. Still gold, but with the silver tops. Um, still witch hats. And then um, simple things like that. Probably change out the bridge um, to a relic bridge. Maybe the tailpiece to a relic tailpiece and the tuners. Not because it needs any of that stuff, by the way. But because I think it would look cooler. Definitely the strap buttons. Um, I would definitely do that. There's too shiny for the guitar. The back of the guitar, like I said... Very cool looking. But let's get into the inside. I know I'm rambling, but sometimes you get a guitar and I'm beyond myself at, well, how confused I am with this guitar in the love-hate relationship. And I didn't like it until I played it, and now I play it, and now I think it's more and more beautiful every time I look at it. And it's just one of those things because I see what can be done. Each one of these nicks right here, we're going to take a little chisel, a file, we're going to actually make those real we're gonna actually sand all this out and we're gonna make all this real in another video we're gonna make it real that's right so box switch like i said um wasn't expecting a box switch but it is a box switch the wiring on this works fantastically it sounds really good and everything is functioning properly as you'll see in a few minutes and they did paint shield the inside which is also a nice touch um but there is your your box switch on the inside so cool now let's take off this and and these are cut decent too um this is all they did shield the inside they didn't shield it with copper but they shielded it with aluminum and that is fine that's what i shield most of my guitars with anyhow and the plastic is still on these pieces are new there and they fit well they fit just as well as any Gibson would fit, but let's uh, let's see if I can get this in here. There we go. So once again, and it's routed out nice. I mean, you could tell the body CNC done. It's definitely a CNC body. Um, wired nicely. We got our pills in here. Um, if I'm trying to read the pots, what do we got here? 
And I really can't see them, to tell you the truth right now. Um, but I will tell you that we have wires in here that are not running to anything. That's right. You see that? So that tells me that your pickups, you got we're going to have a five-wire system on our pickups, or even four, however you want to call it. So that means these pickups are probably more high end than I thought that they were being a two wire setup. It's just a it's a more I call it a four wire setup that is set up to a two two wire system, if that makes any sense to you. Um really cool. Um you got your tone tone bleeds on there, your 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 little pills, chiclet pills. I can't read them right now, but it's done nice inside. So I think the ugliest part is the wire ties that they put on the inside. Um yeah, I have a feeling the pickups are are like probably the best part of this guitar because they sound so phenomenal. And yes, look, they even shield. See, this is the things that I pay attention to that they took the time to shield that stuff because they don't don't have to do that. Um, so that's pretty cool. So we're gonna get over. I'm gonna. I've already done it. So you're. This is hindsight for me. And I've decided just to leave it the way it is. All of the bad stuff, you guys. Your ears might bleed. But I had fun, and that was what it's about. You throw on a backing track, and you have fun, and you experiment. Now, it's coming out of tune, of course, because it's brand new, and uh, and uh, new strings and what have you. So, yes, it was coming out of tune as I was playing it, but it wasn't a big deal. Since then, I'll tell you, it stays in tune remarkably well. And I say remarkably well, as good as any guitar will stay in tune. And it does. It stays in tune fine, which, you know, a lot of times that's the quality of the strings that are being used. I don't think they used really bad strings on here. I don't know what they are, but they don't feel like barbed wire and they don't play like barbed wire. So that is cool. So, one last time, what are we going to change on this guitar? Tuners for one. Going to go more old school on the tuners, maybe some Grovers. I don't know. Um, probably change the bridge and this to relic gonna change the knobs out gonna leave the pickups and i'm gonna change the pick guard itself to a nice thick of more authentic style um pick guard but guys it's got the jimmy page vibe and it has the jimmy page and i wanted to say this at the end it has the jimmy page tone I really like these pickups, guys. All right, let's get over and play this thing. And uh, if you want this guitar, I'm going to leave a link in the description. But remember, when it comes, it's not going to be exactly what you think, but better than you thought um, when it, you get it. There'll be things you hate, but if it plays anything like this one, once you play it, you're going to fall in love with it and um, don't get rid of it. And by the way, the neck, guys. See this neck? Very slim C. Nice slim C on this. Very fast neck, too. I don't know what coating they used on this. This feels almost like a tongue wheel. I don't know. It's fast, though. It's a, There's no slow down. There's no gloss. There's nothing to slow you down super, super fast. And you could still come through here, and you could scrape this binding if you wanted to and really get that nice look. Um, so keep that in mind. All right, guys. Let's get over there and do this. I've been rambling long enough, but hey, what a freaking cool guitar, right? 176 bucks. Amazon, link in the description below. Let me know what you think. I know you're going to be depressed, and I know you're going to be excited at the same time. So take a chance or don't, but remember, rock and roll makes the world go round. Here we go.
Well, there you have it. Do I like it? Yeah, I really like it. It plays really, really nice. Um, coming out of tune a little bit because of brand new strings. But what really amazed me is how good these pickups are and how great it plays. And the strings that are on it are actually really good. They play really nice. They feel good. They don't feel like barbed wire. Um, they don't play like barbed wire. They actually feel really good. And I'm looking, I'm looking at this nut. And um, that appears to be a bone nut on here. This appears to be a bone nut on this guitar. Um, and I'm checking, and nothing's nothing's tight or grabbing or anything. I think the tuners might need a little bit of attention. I think they just need to be kind of turned out a little bit. We're probably gonna put some Grovers on here. Um, maybe some Relic hardware. I kind of like the guitar now after playing it. I'm not gonna lie, very fun guitar. Um. This neck. Oh, I love this neck. Oh, I love this neck. What a fantastic neck. So, um, make sure you hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. We're going to come back more with this. Is this worth the $176 that I paid on Amazon? After playing it, yes. You might not think so, like I thought when I took it out of the box and started nitpicking the shit out of it, um, which we all do, right? Uh, I didn't want to form an opinion. I want to bring you an honest opinion. But man, this is this is a player. This is a player, and that's 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 the. Learn my lesson the last time. If you've ever had a player that you got rid of, you'll know you wish you had that player back. I got my player back. So, um, if you want this guitar, I'm gonna leave a link in the description. Um, and hopefully yours comes set up like this one. This is a fantastically set up guitar. I'm not even gonna try to drop the action lower. Neck is precise. The frets are fantastic. The pickups sound freaking great. And it's the neck is fast, which is really it's a thin neck on here. I'm not sure. Calling it a C, but it's a thin C. This is a very thin C. This is right on par with my with my uh creamer over here. Very thin C, super nice. Yeah, digging it. Alright, guys, and remember it's rock and roll the men's world, do that thing. And peace out. Relic. Ooh, I'm speechless. Bye guys. <laughs>